Getting you to Vegas faster. The latest on the high-speed rail from L.A. and when you could start riding. Plus, meet the Southern California student accepted to 15 colleges. And that includes some Ivy League schools as well. Here are her plans for the future. Hello everyone, you're watching The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston. Construction is now underway on a new high-speed rail line that would take people from Southern California to Las Vegas. The new line will start in Rancho Cucamonga and stop in Victor Valley before making its way to Las Vegas. Bright Line received $6.5 billion in backing from the Biden administration for this project. The company already operates a fast train in Florida and says it aims to connect cities that are too near each other for flying and too far for people to comfortably drive the distance. The electric powered trains are expected to cut the four hour trip across the Mojave Desert to a little more than two hours. The project is expected to be finished and open for passengers in 2028. Gas prices are holding mostly steady for now across Southern California, but that means they're still a lot higher than we're used to. The average price for a gallon of regular in L.A. County is $5.38. That's about a cent more than Sunday. It's a little less than Orange County and the Inland Empire. And if you think it's bad here, well, check out prices up in the Bay Area. A few stations in Menlo Park have a gallon of regular going for well over $7. On average, California drivers are paying almost two bucks more for gas than the rest of the country. It's time to check in with meteorologist Belen De Leon to see what's in store in the weather department. Well, April has been a funny month for us. We just cannot get some consistency. And now here we go, looking at the weather for this work week. Temperatures are coming down. There's going to be a system that will approach the West Coast. That's going to uh, cause a strong onshore flow. It's going to lower our numbers, bring back the marine layer, and we can expect more of that for the rest of the week. So the temperatures over the weekend were warm. We'll start off with numbers in the 80s for Santa Clarita. But look at the work week. Highs are going to be in the 60s. We'll We'll have morning clouds, areas of fog, possibly some drizzle. Now that cooler weather will last until about Friday and then the pattern changes again on us. Over the weekend we'll have sunshine returning and temperatures warming into the 80s by Sunday. So here we go, another ride on the weather roller coaster. Police have identified the man accused of breaking into L.A. Mayor Karen Bass's home in Windsor Square. We're told Mayor Bass was home when police say 29-year-old Ephraim Matthew Hunter smashed the glass window around 6.40 Sunday morning. Police say Hunter made his way around the entire home before officers arrived. LAPD responded to the house alarm and arrested Hunter in the entryway. He was booked for burglary, which includes entering a home illegally with intent to commit theft and is being held on $100,000 dollars bail. In a statement, the mayor's office says Bass and her family were not injured and are safe. The mayor is grateful to LAPD for responding and arresting the suspect. Governor Newsom is proposing a bill aimed at helping abortion providers in Arizona treat their patients here in California. The emergency legislation was announced after the Arizona Supreme Court ruled that a near total abortion ban can take effect in the coming weeks. For me, it's chilling and goes well beyond just the issue of women's reproductive care. It goes to access to contraceptions, voting rights, civil rights, LGBTQ rights, this consequential moment uh, that should absorb most of our focus, uh, not some of the other tangential things that tend to get a little more focus at this precious and important moment in American history. In this exclusive interview with MSNBC's Jen Psaki, Governor Newsom says the number of people seeking reproductive care in California is up 17 percent after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in 2022. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments in a case that could determine whether homelessness can be criminalized. It stems from a small town in Oregon that enforced ordinances, making it illegal to sleep on public property. The court will decide if it's cruel and unusual punishment to fine or jail a homeless person. TikTok is a step closer to being banned. The Senate plans to take up the debate as soon as Tuesday after the House voted to ban it. Over the weekend, the House passed a bill that forces TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell the platform within a year or it will be removed from app stores in the U.S. It passed on a bipartisan vote and President Biden has previously said that he'll sign it. But the bill's future in the Senate is uncertain. TikTok says a ban would trample on free speech. 
This is hard to watch, but police say it's key to their investigation. A man in a black hoodie is caught on video just randomly throwing a punch at a woman walking down the street in Sherman Oaks. Well, now police say this man may have attacked several other women on the same day. We spoke with a victim who did not want to be identified. So when I got close to him, I kind of veered off away from him, putting space between us. He ended up smashing me on the side of my head and I didn't, you know, fall down, but I was seeing stars. It hurt so bad. Stood up straight and he was coming at me again. The attack happened Thursday, and on the same day, another woman was hit and knocked to the ground outside near a sushi restaurant. In the video, you can see he hits her as she was getting out of her car and then just walks away. She also did not want to be identified. This guy came very fast to me. He pushed me from behind, like, very uh, abruptly. I rolled a few times. I fell on my head, like, on my hand, on my knee. Um, and then he started walking very fast. The victims believe it was the same man who attacked both of them. So far, police have not connected the two cases, but anyone with information on who this man is is urged to call police. The CHP is investigating a tram crash at Universal Studios that injured 15 people. It happened Saturday. The CHP says the tram had just passed the Jurassic Park cars and made a turn when the last car hit a metal guardrail. That caused the tram to tilt. 15 people were taken to the hospital. It was scary. We saw um, a couple of the um, people that were affected um, standing around. They looked cold. They looked scared. A statement by Universal Studios Hollywood reads, Our thoughts continue to be with the guests who were involved, and we are thankful that based on agency reports, the injuries sustained were minor. Universal Studios is working closely with CHP to determine the cause of the crash. Studio tours are back in operation. Universal Studios and NBC4 are both owned by the same parent company, Comcast. The death of a furry companion is always difficult, but on top of the heartache, local pet owners learn they were scammed trying to get their pet cremated. NBC4's Darsha Phillips has the story. I mean, he was the best. I had him for over 20 years. Robert Baylog and his friend Tori lost their beloved cat Stewie in February. The day he died, they searched online for a 24 hour pet cremation service and found We Care. Oh, you know, it's private cremation. We do everything in house. We come in a black car. Tori and Robert say when We Care picked up Stewie, there was no black car but they paid the $560 hoping to get back an urn with Stewie's ashes. But then they say, we care, ghosted them. He became less and less responsive. And then I, I, I Google searched them more and I went and found all their reviews. Dozens of reviews from customers who either didn't get the service they paid for or never received their pet's ashes. I thought that they threw him in a dumpster. I thought they threw his body on the side of the road. I very much thought that we were never going to get him back. Tori and Robert posted a video to Instagram about their experience. That got We Care's attention, and they promised to return Stewie. What happened next is bizarre. Robert says he drove to a Best Buy parking lot in Oxnard, where a man handed him a bag. I had opened the bag to see that it was him, and it was, you know, he's decomposing now. So the scent is in the car. We Care never cremated Stewie, and Robert and Tori were never refunded their money. You're offering a service, you're collecting money for that service, and then you're just disappearing. If that's not the definition of a scam, then I don't know what is. Ultimately, Tori and Robert want the people behind We Care to be held responsible and to never have what they went through happen to someone else. They're absolutely taking advantage of grieving pet parents. The list for this year's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is out, and there are a few surprises. Mary J. Blige is headed into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This year's class also includes Cher, Foreigner, A Tribe Called Quest, and the Dave Matthews Band. They're all legends. They're part of 16 inductees. But the surprise on the list was Jimmy Buffett, who wasn't even on the ballot this year or even nominated. Buffett was added in a separate non-voted category for musical excellence. Things look a little different around here. I'd say the thing that looks the most different is me. <laughs>
Hey, we know who that man is, right? That's actor Kevin Bacon returning to the Utah school where he filmed Footloose 40 years ago. Can you believe it's been 40 years? Students teamed up with Bacon's Foundation Six Degrees and organized items to be distributed to four different local charities. This is awesome that it's happening, but then it's like, what do we do after? Sleep? Maybe sleep all day? <laughs> I, think, I think that's what I'm going to do. It is pretty awesome. During his visit, Bacon was also awarded an honorary Payson High School diploma and posed for photos with students. A senior at Seegers from High School in Santa Ana not only got into her dream school, she got into 14 others. 17-year-old Brandy Figueroa got accepted into 15 universities, including Harvard, Brown, Columbia, Stanford, and several UCs. And it's no surprise, Brandy is a member of a dozen clubs and is involved in student government. I want to become a constitutional lawyer and then go into government. It has to do with the fact of um, I want to help others and, you know, represent them, hopefully, and just be able to create an impact of at least, you know, one person. Brandy also has a 4.7 GPA. She hasn't decided what school she's attending just yet, but my goodness, she has so many options. Congratulations to you, Brandy. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays, 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with traffic reports throughout the morning. I'll see you next time on The Rundown.